Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Steve, and today I've got an unboxing and first impressions for you of the Brew Metric in PBD Gold. Now, this watch was actually sent in by my buddy Lucas, so thank you, Lucas, for giving me the first opportunity to look at this watch. I'm also gonna be comparing this watch to my other gold watches, the PRX, which I have right here. I'm actually not even wearing a watch right now. I'm putting on the PRX. That's what I'm gonna do. It's here. I don't know why I wasn't wearing a watch. I'm going to be comparing it to the PRX and the Seiko SNKK52. SNKK? SNKK52. I think that's the reference on that watch. I'm going to be doing a side by side comparison of all of them. But before we get started, please like and subscribe down below. Hit the bell icon. It really does mean a lot. And if you want to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, please, everything is down below. Now, let's go ahead, flip that camera, and we'll get started with the unboxing. Before I start the unboxing, I'm going to do a wristwatch check. I am wearing the Tissot PRX. Now, I was originally just going to compare the PRX to my Seiko SNKK52, and that's before this brew was released in gold. And uh, yeah, I'm going to compare all three of them. So we're going to have the best uh, gold watch under 500 ish dollars. So let's go ahead and bring the brew into uh, into camera here. And I haven't ordered a brew in a long time. I think I ordered one, what was it called? The Retrograph? I'm not sure exactly which one. It was a great timepiece actually, I liked it a lot. Uh, but I moved on from it after the PRX came out. I do have reviews of all that, so go ahead and click up there and uh, you can watch all my reviews of the PRX and the brew. Um, this is the metric. This is in the PVD gold, like I said, black dial. I like this box that uh, brew has made. My box is a little bit different when I ordered mine. Let's go ahead and open this up here. Okay, we have the watch here and a little bit, uh, a little blurb right here at the top. Let's go ahead and take this out. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, let's see. We've got a nice manual. Uh, when I actually was designing the FD1 and we were going through the uh, manuals and all that stuff, that was like a really cool part. So it, it is nice seeing uh, these small little details on this micro brand. All right, cool. Let's pop that in there and take that to the side. We have like this canvassy denim uh, pouch here. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right, now we have a little traveler's pouch with brew emboss on there. Nice stitching around here. It's button enclosed, and here we go. Ooh, it's not as rich of a gold as I thought it was gonna be. I'll compare it to my PRX here in a second. That is really nice. I like the the bracelet on this, it's very retro. Um, let's go ahead and take this out, actually. Yeah, the, the gold is much more muted, as you can tell by my PRX. Um, yeah, it's just a little bit more muted gold. Here's the case back itself. Uh, I'm going to leave the stickers on for Luke so, you know, he can take those off if he wants to. Uh, yeah, not too bad. We have a milled clasp here. Uh, this part, I believe, is stamped. It does have a little bean on there. Overall, it looks really nice. Let's go ahead and get some dimensions here. Just about a 36-ish, 36.4, somewhere around there. An effective look to log of 41.2 millimeters, just under 11 millimeters, 10.9 millimeters. Uh, lug width doesn't really matter. You're probably gonna be keeping it on this integrated bracelet, but just in case, it is a 20 millimeter on the bracelet, 128 grams. So that's not too bad at all. Let's do a little side-by-side -side comparison. See, I, I like the black dial with the gold. I think that looks really nice, really nice. All right, let's go ahead and put this on the wrist real quick. It's, a, it's like a nice TV dial, retro TV dial. And that bracelet tapers really nice down to the clasp. I'm going to go ahead and get a measurement on that as well. But that looks really, really good. Okay, let me pop this off and do a uh, measurement on the bracelet. So here it does flare out a bit right at the case from 26 millimeters down to the smallest part on the bracelet at 16-ish millimeters. And then it bumps up on the clasp to about 17 and a half millimeters. So overall, a pretty hefty taper. 
So what's cool is they have like that hidden coffee bean at the three o'clock right there. I don't know if you can even catch it on camera. It's hard to tell, but you have that offset sub dial. I really like the way it looks because you're <laughs> the sub dials are placed so not awkwardly. I mean, I guess it is awkwardly, but it, it's so unique that uh, it's going to give its own vibe, its own presence. And uh, people are going to look down and ask, what is that? Because they've probably never seen a sub dial that high up before. So at least I haven't, <laughs> I haven't seen it. But uh, yeah, overall, not too bad at all. Looks like we have push pins here. Let me see what this link is. Yeah, it looks like it's just a standard split pin. And we have four areas of micro adjust. So I'm sorry, four positions of micro adjust. Um, as you can tell, I'm a bit rusty when it comes to YouTube videos. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, it's held, the case back is held down by four screws, and we do have a little slot there so you can change out the strap. Um, if you wanted to put a leather strap or, you know, maybe a, a replacement metal one eventually. But, yeah, overall, this looks really good. Oop. Well, that plastic came off. Yeah, the presence on the wrist is really good. I like how... Uh, it sits. I like the dimensions. I like the proportions. It looks really good. And I'm, I'm really a big fan of the black dial on the gold case and gold band. I think that's really sharp. I, that colorway is definitely coming back. So let me go ahead and stop it and restart. Man, it restarts so nice. Just so snappy. Absolutely love it. This is really nice. I might have to buy this off of Luke. I don't believe there's any AR coating on the glass. Doesn't seem that way. Um, this is 50 meters of water resistance. I mean, obviously it's a chronograph, so you're probably not going to wear it near the water. But if you do, um, just be aware there's 50 meters of water resistance. No date window, like I said. This does have that hybrid VK68 mecha quartz chronograph movement. If I didn't say that already, I'm pretty sure I did. Let me go ahead and flip that camera and take you back to the studio. So there it is, the Brew Metric in PVD Gold. Man, this thing, it surprised me. It really did. Now, I've always been a fan of Brew watches. I like their design of their watches. And just having a Mecha Quartz chronograph, something that's affordable and also has that snappiness um, in restarting that chronograph hand, really, I mean, it fills a lot of needs and wants in that category. And then plus, gold, I mean... Who doesn't love a gold watch, really? So I'm super excited to actually have this in my hand. Sadly, sadly, I'm going to have to give this back to Lucas tomorrow, I think. So, um, yeah, I really want to keep this. I should buy it off him. No, no, no. I cannot buy it off him. I should, though. Should I? <sighs> so let's go ahead and get started of what I like about the brew. First of all, $475, less than $500 for a fully PVD watch, which my PRX was about $450, I believe, at the time of purchase. I'm not sure if it's gone down at all since then, um, but $450 when it was first released. The gold isn't as vivid as the PRX, so it's up to you on whether or not you like that style of gold or the T uh, PRX style of gold. Um, but having that black dial with the gilt indices just really pops. I, I just like the way that looks. I was actually looking at uh, some Mariners, fully gold Samariners with the black dial. And yeah, it's just something about the black and gold really, really looks just fabulous on the wrist. My next pro is actually how well this fits on my seven and a half inch wrist. On paper, I thought this was going to be much smaller. Uh, and then I put it on. And I was like, wow, this actually fills my wrist up very nice. And I think it has something to do with that square case. The dimensions are, um, it doesn't really translate from a circular watch to a square watch. And then with that taper of that bracelet, it tapers down very nicely, very elegant looking. Um, yeah, I, I love, I love what they did with the dimensions here. I think it fits my, well, do, definitely fits my wrist perfectly, but I think it probably fits well on a lot of different wrists. Now, I'm a sucker for branding. So when I saw the amount of branding on this watch, I absolutely loved it. Not only do you have the brew logo on the crown, you have the brew logo on the clasp, you actually have the coffee bean 
on the dial at three o'clock. It's recessed into the dial, so it's all black. You could barely see it in most situations, but just knowing that it's there really brings the uh, just really brings the dial all together. Even with those offset subdials, the, the, the subdials itself. At first, I was kind of put off by it, but now just looking at it, I don't know. It's just something about it, something unique. Um, that you don't really see that often is that offset subdial. They did a really good job with this design. So I'm really blown away <laughs> about everything that you get for 450 bucks. And as far as the movement goes, it's tried and tested. It's a Seiko movement. You know, you're getting a quality movement, a quality build construction. And if you're into the brew aesthetic, you're going to like the design. So for $475, I think they're pretty much giving you the maximum amount of watch you can get for that price point. Now it's time for my cons. And um, I really don't, I really don't know what to say. Um, there's really not that many cons when it comes to this watch. I, for $475, I would expect some corners to be cut. But here, I mean, for the most part, everything fits just nice you know nothing too crazy about it if i'm gonna nitpick which i can the uh the clasp is just standard you know there's nothing to it um slightly rattly but overall the construction of this is very nice you have the split pins but at that price point it makes sense there you're, you shouldn't expect screwed links and all these other things for a price point this low. So one thing I did forget to mention when I was recording was that there is no loom on the metric. I don't know why I didn't even think about it, but there is no loom on the metric. So if that's something that you're looking for, steer clear of this watch because there is no loom. I am going to put in a loom shot uh, or lack thereof. But anyways, I just want to make mention there is no loom on the metric. So if you're in the market for a chronograph or in this case, a gold chronograph, which who doesn't want a gold watch in their collection, and you like the brew design language, then I say it's a good buy. The build quality is there. The presentation is there. When you unbox this beautiful watch, you're basically getting as much as your money can buy. So please let me know in the comment section below, what do you think of the brew metric or brew watches in general? And please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you wanna watch more of my content. I have also reviewed the brew retromatic. And um, so go ahead, I'm gonna put that up here or here. I'm gonna put it right here. One of these two buttons is gonna have the brew retromatic review. So please subscribe, like the video, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one.